In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, we honor the Blessed Virgin Mary. Let us acknowledge our sins, prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. As we venerate the glorious memory of the Most Holy Virgin Mary, grant we pray, O Lord, through her intercession, that we too may merit to receive from the fullness of your grace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Lamentations. The Lord has consumed without pity all the dwellings of Jacob. He has torn down in his anger the fortresses of daughter Judah. He has brought to the ground in dishonor her king and her princes. On the ground in silence sit the old men of daughter Zion. They strew dust on their heads and gird themselves with sackcloth. The maidens of Jerusalem bow their heads to the ground. Worn out from weeping are my eyes. Within me all is inferment. My gall is poured out on the ground because of the downfall of the daughter of my people. As child and infant faint away in the open spaces of the town. In vain they ask their mothers, where is the grain? As they faint away like the wounded in the streets of the city and breathe their last in their mother's arms. To what can I liken or compare you, O daughter Jerusalem? What example can I show you for your comfort, virgin daughter Zion? For great as the sea is your downfall, who can heal you? Your prophets had for you false and specious visions. They did not lay bare your guilt to avert your fate. They beheld for you in vision false and misleading portents. Cry out to the Lord, moan, O daughter Zion. Let your tears flow like a torrent, day and night. Let there be no respite for you, no repose for your eyes. Rise up, shrill in the night, at the beginning of every watch. Pour out your heart like water in the presence of the Lord. Lift up your hands to him, for the lives of your little ones who faint from hunger at the corner of every street. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, forget not the souls of your poor ones. Lord, forget not the souls of your poor ones. Why, O God, have you cast us off forever? Why does your anger smolder against the sheep of your pasture? Remember your flock, which you built up of old, the tribe you redeemed as your inheritance, Mount Zion, where you took up your abode. Lord, forget not the souls of your poor ones. Turn your steps toward the utter ruins, toward all the damage the enemy has done in the sanctuary. Your foes roar triumphantly in your shrine. They have set up their tokens of victory. They are like men coming up with axes to a clump of trees. Lord, forget not the souls of your poor ones. With chisel and hammer, they hack at all the paneling of the sanctuary. They set your sanctuary on fire. The place where your name abides, they have raised and profaned. Lord, forget not the souls of your poor ones. Look to your covenant, for the hiding places in the land and the plains are full of violence. May the humble not retire in confusion. May the afflicted and the poor praise your name. Lord, forget not the souls of your poor ones.
Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Christ took away our infirmities and bore our diseases. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus entered Capernaum, a centurion approached him and appealed to him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, suffering dreadfully. He said to him, I will come and cure him. The centurion said in reply, Lord, I am not worthy to have you enter under my roof. Only say the word and my servant will be healed. For I too am a man subject to authority with soldiers subject to me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come here, and he comes. And to my slave, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those following him, Amen, I say to you, in no one in Israel have I found such faith. I say to you, many will come from the east and the west and will recline with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at the banquet in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom will be driven out into the outer darkness, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. And Jesus said to the centurion, You may go. As you have believed, let it be done for you. And at that very hour his servant was healed. Jesus entered the house of Peter and saw his mother-in-law lying in bed with a fever. He touched her hand, the fever left her, and she rose and waited on him. When it was evening, they brought him many who were possessed by demons, and he drove out the spirits by a word and cured all the sick to fulfill what had been said by Isaiah the prophet. He took away our infirmities and bore our diseases. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Before I begin the homily this morning, I would like to express my deep appreciation and gratitude to the men who spent all night here in the church with a prayer vigil praying for the end of the scourge that is abortion. Because typically in June we have the Men's March for Life, and the, the march itself was canceled for various reasons this year. But a handful of the men put their prayer time in, their sacrifice of giving up sleep and so forth last night for this worthy cause. So this year the angels and saints will be marching, but we'll join them next year. So. You know, thank you very much for your effort, and we will we'll continue to pray uh, for this very worthy cause. In our gospel here today is where we get the fami familiar phrase that is repeated every time we prepare to receive Holy Communion. Lord, I am not worthy. You should enter under my roof. Those are words of great humility and trust from the Roman centurion who asked Jesus to heal his servant from a distance. Now, Jesus is so impressed with this man's faith so impressed that he said, and no one in Israel have I found such faith. So let's take a quick look at what makes up the centurion's faith so that we too might be able to strengthen ours. First, we have to take a look at his humility. The centurion acknowledges that he is not worthy to have Jesus come to his home. That is true. In fact, none of us are worthy of such a great grace. Now the home, He's referring to, of course, for us, is our soul. We're not worthy of Jesus coming to our souls to make his home here with us. Now, for some, that might at first be hard to accept. I mean, we're, we're really not worthy? No, no, we're not. That's just the fact. It's important to know this so that a number, another humble realization can take place. We can also acknowledge that Jesus chooses to come to us anyway. Recognizing our unworthiness should fill us with great gratitude to the fact that Jesus comes to us even when we're a mess. The centurion was justified in the sense that God poured his grace on him because of that simple humility. He also had great trust in Jesus. 
and the fact that the centurion knew he was unworthy of such a grace makes his trust all that more sacred. And that's the right word here, it's sacred. It's sacred in that he knew he was unworthy, but he also knew that Jesus loved him anyway and desired to come to him and to come and heal his servant. This should show us that our trust in Jesus must not be based on whether or not we have a right to his presence in our lives, but rather our trust is based on our knowledge of his infinite mercy and compassion. Or in other words, we trust him because we know he is trustworthy. And if any of you are struggling with that, especially because many people struggle with trust, if you don't know that Jesus is trustworthy, let him prove it. But start doing so today. But the bottom line, though, is this. This is what made the faith of the centurion great. He knew that Jesus wants to seek out mercy and so forth to give to us by opening up our doors to our hearts. Jesus is so good at tapping on that door to open up because he knows we want his mercy and love despite our unworthiness. The centurion knew that. So reflect today on your own humility and trust. Can you pray this prayer? Lord, I'm not worthy, you should enter under my roof. Can you pray with the same faith as a centurion? Let him be the model for you, especially every time you prepare to receive Jesus under your roof, the roof of your soul in Holy Communion. Placing our trust in the God's hands, let's come before him now with our prayers and intercessions. Let all of us who are baptized and set apart to preach through our words and our lives of the saving promises of Jesus Christ will do so fearlessly and without compromise. We pray to the Lord. For all those who suffer, that they may be touched by the sacred heart of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. For those trapped in lives of sin, that the gift of Jesus Christ will free them from whatever holds them bound, we pray to the Lord. For an increase of vocations to the priesthood and to the consecrated life, we pray to the Lord. For continued grace to live without fear, trusting in Jesus' help in all that we say and do, we pray to the Lord. And for the special intentions for which this Mass is being offered. For all the holy souls in purgatory, for the health of Beth Lukes, and for a special intention on behalf of Matt and, and Melanie Mascareñas, we pray to the Lord. Lord Please take a moment to bow your heads and in silence ask God for whatever you need. For all of these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Heavenly Father, through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, may all of us continue to be worthy sons of so worthy a mother. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink.
pray, brothers and sisters, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer you the sacrifice of praise, O Lord, as we rejoice in commemorating the mother of your son. Grant to pray that through this most holy exchange, we may advance toward eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name in veneration of the Blessed Ever-Virgin Mary. By the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven, the blessed seraphim, worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we are clad. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one, by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, John our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, we may praise and glorify you through your Son, 
Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. To say of his command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on her sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace in unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Now, for those of you here with us at home, it's time now for our act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul, since I cannot at this moment, receive you sacramentally. 
come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Renewed with this heavenly food, we humbly implore you, O Lord, having received your Son, born of the tender virgin, under sacramental signs, may we profess him in words and hold fast to him in deeds, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.